I think one thing a lot of people are going to be quite intrigued about is my Premiere Pro has just crashed. Nice. Yeah, yeah. nice. What is going on guys? I know it's been a stupid amount of time since I last made a YouTube video. It's been it's been way too long. But I'm back today and we're going to be covering the sound design in Above the Rim, which is my latest video with Lumix UK. If you haven't watched that, you can check it out in the description below or the top right, which is one of these sides. I never get it right. We're going to get into the video. Big thanks to Audio, which is today's sponsor. We'll go into a bit more detail about who they are and what they do in a little bit. But for now, let's get stuck in. Right, okay, so sound effects, sound design, all of that is super important in your videos. So today we're gonna dive into what I did for Above the Rim and how I tried to create this atmosphere for my viewers. So here we have the timeline for Above the Rim in front of me. Let's just show you guys what the film looks and sounds like with no sound effects and just the music track. But let's show you guys with the sound effects without the voiceover and you can hear just how much better it sounds. So first, let's talk about the voiceover. What's important to me in the voiceover is natural flow and natural timing. So the way I do that is by chopping up the voiceover and placing it in parts that I feel sound good. I slash and I, I dunk on people's heads. But in reality, the voiceover was much more like this. I slash and I, I dunk on people's heads. So a tip for voiceovers, when you're cutting up different clips, you might have abrupt endings. For example, I'll show you here. In the hours yourself, I gotta put in the hours. So you can tell there I didn't want to carry on the voiceover bit anymore, so I had to drop the volume down, but it seems quite abrupt. You gotta put in the hours yourself. So the way I solved this was adding a reverb to the whole audio one track. You can see here with the audio track mixer, I actually show you guys how to access this part in my previous sound design video. You can check it up there on the top right by adding a reverb to the track. It helps the abrupt endings just trail off a bit nicer and makes them a bit softer. Let's have a listen. And then obviously, you know, you gotta put in the hours yourself. So whilst there's still a bit of an abrupt ending, it just transfers a bit nicer. So let me show you with all of the sound effects as well. And then obviously, you know, you gotta put in the hours yourself. And I'll show you without the reverb. And then obviously, you know, you gotta put in the hours yourself. Now let me go through the settings for my voiceover. Here we have a multi-band compressor which is set to the broadcast setting. Secondly, I added a parametric equalizer. This is the graph that I made here. So we have an increase in the levels in the bass C sounds of his voice. I wanted his voice to have a bit more punch and I also reduced um, the harsh S sounds and the just the harsher higher frequencies of his voice because the microphone is quite sensitive in that area. And then the last thing for the studio reverb, I had the preset great hall and i messed around a little bit with the dry and wet settings yeah the reverb just makes the voiceover sound a bit less in your face and it also gives the kind of impression that we recorded the voiceover in like a basketball hall okay so next let's talk about music choice if we have a look in the beginning here it's this subtle atmospheric piano track A cool thing here is that the track is not actually at 100% speed. I sped it up to 125%. Let me show you what it sounds like at 100%. So it gives it a bit more of a darker feel, but in my opinion, it was just a little bit too slow. Feel free to make changes to the tempo of the track to make it fit better in your film. Another reason that I made it faster was so that the tempo of the song would match the tempo that he bounced the ball in. If the track was any slower or any faster, it wouldn't seem in time. And for me, my editing style is all about the flow and how things feel and how the tempo is. If you're watching my videos and you really focus on the sound effects, everything relates to the music track, everything relates to the voiceover, it's all in time. And I really focus on making these little details perfect so that it just makes the listening and watching experience a little bit smoother. Now we have the rest of the music tracks here. Let's have a listen.
I chose this choiry beat track. I thought it was really cool because, I don't know, it just sounded really awesome and I liked the choir. To me, it sounded a bit like this mysterious vibe. It's building up to the final track, which you can hear right here. Now, let's talk about where I got the music from. So these music tracks I sourced from Audio, which I mentioned was also the sponsor of this video. I've been using them for the past couple of months now and I've genuinely been really, it's, it's been a very refreshing experience with really high quality music, really high quality sound effects. I'm actually a really big fan of the user experience. UI is really clean and minimal and it isn't buggy, which I've found is the case with some other platforms. Here, there's a lot of different ways to filter through music. They also have a couple of different plans for you guys to choose from. Firstly, they have a sound effects plan and they also have two different subscriptions for creators. So one is a lifetime subscription, which means you pay once and you get access to everything and you can license this music for YouTube and other socials. However, if you create content for TV or stuff like that, they have the Audio Pro subscription, which currently has a 50% off sale for your first year. This is an annual subscription and this covers you for everything. And yeah, it's just it just works. And for me, that's really important. So if you want to check it out and see what I'm banging on about, you can sign up using the link in my description. Uh, let me know if you guys sign up as well and if you're enjoying the platform because they're relatively new, um, but I'm, I'm honestly really enjoying it. So check out audio. So when people have their voiceovers with music, a lot of people tend to just volume duck, which basically means they just drop their volume. But I found a better way to make your voiceover sit over your music tracks. So here's what the voiceover sounds like when you volume duck. Whether it be I'm playing in Europe, in America, in Canada, in where my issue with volume ducking is that you don't get to hear some of the music behind it and also when you volume duck different frequencies with the voiceover and the song tend to clash. So what I do is I go into the music track and I add a simple parametric EQ and a low pass filter. And the way this works is that the center here, which is the parametric EQ, I set this center to 1290 Hertz. So a simple parametric EQ basically just chooses a frequency and then you can either choose to drop or increase the volume. Here's like a visualization here. It's chosen a frequency at about 1290 Hertz, which is where the main vocal range sits. You have some people who are very bassy, but this is like the main range. And I've keyframed it to drop in volume as the voiceover enters. So this is basically what happens over time. So this way it doesn't affect the voiceover, but you can still hear it in the background. And another thing I do is add a low pass filter. This basically cuts out the higher end of the song so that the higher frequencies don't clash with his voiceover as well. It makes the sound a bit more muffled so the song sits underneath the voiceover. And here it is with the voiceover. Whether it be I'm playing in Europe, in America, in Canada, in wherever. So you can hear that and then let me show you what it sounds like with the volume duck. Whether it be I'm playing in Europe, in America, in Canada, in... I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it doesn't sound as full. So lastly, we're going to be talking about in-camera and external sound effects. So that all the blue clips here have been recorded in-camera using the Sennheiser MKE 600 shotgun mic, which is what I'm recording this voiceover on now. And then the green bits are all external sound effects. But I can't stress the importance of actually recording in-camera audio when you're doing your shoot. There are just some things that you can't recreate. I mean, you can recreate using sound effects, but it's not going to be as real. Let me show you what these all sound like. So there's a ton of like whoosh sound effects, which tons of people use. And I like using them because obviously when a ball falls into his hand, it's not going to make that that sound effect. It just helps link the previous shot to the next shot. And when your brain kind of hears that sound effect, it's picturing like a ball flying really fast into his hands. So with my editing style, I kind of just create different beats with my sound effects. So I think one thing a lot of people are going to be interested in is how I did this sound effect right here. First thing I did was add a reverb effect to one of the audio tracks. So let's listen to this one right here. 
Now you may notice that it sounded like in the actual film that there was very very hard cut. So if I show you what that sounded like without the reverb, it's it's quite abrupt. So what I did was added a reverb track just softens it out a little bit more. And all I did with these cut bits is actually find a whoosh sound effect. So if I reveal this in a project, one last cool sound effect I added was I recorded my own voice breathing out. And without a reverb, this is what that track would have sounded like. It doesn't sound as good, so when you turn the reverb back on, so that's it from me. I hope you guys found this video interesting and insightful to see how I edit my audio in my films. Follow me on Instagram, check out audio, and I'll see you guys next time. Maybe in a year, maybe next week. Who knows? I don't know.